Good morning, and welcome to Worship with Good Samaritan Church in Pinellas Park, Florida. I'm Jeremy Wallace, the seminary intern, and as we always say at Good Sam, whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here, and we really mean it. You are welcome here if you are male or female or a little bit of both. You are welcome here if you have deep faith or your faith is wavering or a little bit of both. And as always, you are welcome here if you Zoom or you don't Zoom or a little bit of both. And on that note, we wanna welcome those of you who are gonna join us uh, later in the week on YouTube to uh, view our recorded service. Because however you, you choose to join us, we are grateful that you are here for worship and continue to be the church with us. So please join us as we sing our song of welcome and where we remember the kind of people and the kind of church we want to be. in just a moment if you would unmute your mics with me and we'll say all together are you ready we're going to say the peace of christ be with you here we go may the peace of the christ, peace christ, christ be with you, with you. With you. you. Also, and also, also with you, with you. friends jesus says wherever two or three are gathered in my name i am there among you and so we remember that Jesus is the host of our time together, the host of our worship, even here virtually. Now let us be called to worship. Friends, come into this space. This is a space of peace. It's a space of sanctuary. It's a space of love and community. Breathe in deeply. If you want, you can scroll through and see everyone who's here gathered with us. 
come and still your spirit this morning. Come and find your way into worship, even in these difficult and unsettling times. Let us worship together. We'll open with uh, the song, Let Us Our Tongues and Talents Employ. You'll find it on the screen in just a moment. Listen now to our scripture. It comes to us from Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 11 through 16 and 20 through 24. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a, on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture there they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. And I will set over them one shepherd, my servant David, and shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Friends, will you pray with me? God, we come into this space and this time of worship together this morning, and we are longing to hear your still speaking voice, longing to hear the sweet sound of our shepherd. And so we pray that the words of my mouth, the words of all of our mouths, and the meditations of our hearts would be pleasing to you. 
and where we depart from your spirit, O God, may that quickly fall away. Amen. Well, this will be a very strange Thanksgiving for many of us. Holidays punctuate our lives with these rhythms of coming together. The rest of the year, we may be separated from loved ones, but we get these times, or we get through those times of separation by looking forward to those times of reunion and reconnection, those times when we will regather with friends and family at the holidays. Even those of us who don't have family to spend the holiday with, we often get together with a friend or two, or maybe we're even accustomed to going and serving a meal to those in need. Caring for one another in the past has often meant making sure no one is alone and no one is hungry on these big days because somehow the loneliness and the isolation is amplified on these gathering days. But now this year, with 10,000 American deaths just in the last week due to COVID, the CDC is telling us that caring for each other means staying isolated, staying isolated on these soul needed gathering days. And wow, is that ever hard. For my family, our extended family lives quite literally across the country from us. My side in Washington and California and Julie's side in Michigan. And even though there are many holidays that we don't travel to see family, this year the distance feels different. It feels so much greater than it ever has before. It feels impenetrable and indefinite. I haven't been out West in almost two years. I was supposed to visit my family this past summer at the end of my sabbatical, but of course those plans changed. I miss my family immensely and there is grief. There is sadness and some anger that I don't know when I will see them next. I don't know when my kids will see their grandparents or cousins, aunts, and uncles next. In the past, it was the cost of travel that was the impediment. And now it feels like it's so much more. Even for those of you gathering in person with loved ones on Thanksgiving, it will look different this year, right? You may be waving through a window at each other, keeping that barrier between you. You may be unable to hug or satisfy that hunger in your body for touch and physical connection. You may be sitting apart, masked, struggling to hear each other or, or straining to see those crinkles at the edges of someone's eyes to know that they're smiling at you. You may not be able to set your table inside, but we'll have to figure out how to share the meal outside this year which honestly is, is much easier for us to manage here in, in Florida than up north. This year will look different. There's no getting around it. Okay, confession time. I was listening to some Christmas music the other day. Yes, early 2020 seems to warrant some early Christmas music. I heard the song, I'll be home for Christmas come on, and it hit me hard. Yes, many of us will be home for the holidays, even when we'd rather not be, but many of us will be so terribly homesick for the people that make it feel like home. Even as the, the spiritual formation team and I have started to plan our, our holiday worship at Good Sam, I find myself oscillating between sadness and anger because, well, nothing, at least nothing safe, nothing will feel quite like home for our Good Sam family this year, quite like the worship we're used to and the community gathering times we're used to. 
Many of the Hebrew scriptures were written while the Hebrew people were trapped in exile. When they're trapped in a foreign land, isolated, unable to get to what would truly feel like home. And this year I find myself resonating so much with that aching homesickness that fills their pages. I also resonate with that sense of impending danger that they experienced while they were living in enemy territory, feeling powerless, feeling uncertain about the future. These days, a lot of questions fill my mind. Will we have a peaceful transfer of power in this country? Will the vaccines work? When will they become widely available? And how much life will be lost in the meantime? Will this virus take someone I love? Will the economy hold or will it start to rapidly decline? Will that affect my family, those I love, those at Good Sam? How many in our community, in our congregation will become food or housing insecure? How many will lose jobs? How many will develop mental illnesses? Will the Supreme Court remove my family's legal protections? Will violence toward racial minorities, towards trans identified folks continue to escalate? Will white supremacist acts of terror continue? And again, how many lives will be lost in the meantime? Now I know from my conversations with all of you that I'm not alone in this. Many of us have this constant refrain of these questions playing in the background. Even those of us who are not accustomed to what if or worst case scenario thinking. And it's exhausting. The prophet Ezekiel is speaking to people like us in our passage today, homesick, exhausted people on high alert. And what he offers by way of comfort is the image of God as a shepherd, a shepherd who promises to lead us home, a shepherd who promises to bring us back together, a shepherd who promises to come find us in all those places where we feel lost and stuck and isolated. Isn't that what we need to hear? That our current reality isn't our forever reality? That someone is leading us out of 2020, pulling us together into one flock again? You may have heard at some point over the years about the lost boys of the Sudan. One of them became the student body president at my college shortly before my time. He had been a shepherd back in Africa, and he described how shepherds were some of the bravest people he'd ever met. I still remember him describing those nights with the sheep out in the wilderness. He said something along the lines of, You'd be sleeping by the fire and you'd hear something, a branch crack. And you knew it was a lion or something wanting to attack your sheep. You'd be up on your feet in an instant. And rather than running from the danger, you'd position yourself right there between your sheep and whatever it was that was threatening them. You made yourself that first line of defense. Shepherds, he once said, they aren't fearless. They just feel so much responsibility for the sheep in their care that they quite literally are willing to risk their own life to protect them. For him, these scriptures about God as the good shepherd spoke volumes about the strong, fierce, yet tender loving care God has for us. Isn't that a beautiful image? God positioning God's self between us and all those dangers threatening us in 2020. 
God coming to find us in our isolation right now, right where we are, lost and alone and separated from the flock. God guiding us through this pandemic when we never feel quite sure what to do or whose advice to take or whose data hasn't been tainted by politics. Isn't it lovely to think of God feeding those of us not only who are starving for food, but also for community? To think of God healing those among us who have been injured during this time, whether that's physically or mentally or emotionally injured. I don't know about you, but I find such comfort in Ezekiel's vision of our shepherd God. When I was five years old and a kindergartner, my teacher forgot one day that my mom had told her that morning she was coming to pick me up at school. And even though I told her my mom was coming, she put me on the bus home. So of course, when the bus dropped me off at the neighborhood bus stop, my mom wasn't there. Now my bus stop was next to this big oak tree and my mom and I had a deal that if I ever got off and she wasn't there, I was to hug that tree. By which of course she meant stick close to the tree. But five-year-old me took it very literally. And so when my mom got to school, learned I'd been put on the bus and dashed home, arriving back 10 minutes later, she scanned the whole area around the bus stop. And she finally spotted me. My arms were outspread, wrapped around that giant oak tree, and my little body was just <sighs> heaving with tears. During those 10 minutes, I had refused to go with a neighbor who had seen me and pulled over, following my mom's strict orders never to get in the car with a stranger. Those 10 minutes I stood there clinging to that tree, they felt like an eternity at that age. I remember that feeling of being all alone, not knowing my way home, not knowing when my mom was coming, and being so vulnerable to that stranger danger that they preached at us all the time in the 80s and 90s. I may be old enough now to know that I don't need to hug huge oak trees anymore when I feel lost or alone or scared. But in 2020, it's sure nice to be reminded that God is coming to find us and to lead us home. Ezekiel's vision of restoration, it, it offers comfort to everyone, except for one group within that flock of God's people. He calls them the strong fat ones. Clearly he's not learned how to speak politically correct. His issue, though, is not that they are strong or fat, fat. So all of us who are a little overweight, you can breathe a sigh of relief. His issue is that they have become strong and fat by stealing resources from others, by hoarding. He says they've ravaged the flock. I saw a provocative statement re recently that said there is no such thing as an ethical billionaire. Now you may not agree with that statement. I'm still figuring out what I think of it, but it did get me thinking. It is pretty hard to get that far ahead in the world without exploiting and stepping on a lot of people to get there. And it's pretty hard to hold on to that kind of wealth while so many in the world suffer and still be an ethical, compassionate person. Shouldn't anyone with that much wealth give so much of it away that they never even achieve billionaire status? Another person recently got me thinking when they remarked that the apparent success of capitalism in the Western world has been a product of stealing land and using forced slave labor or cheap undercompensated labor and so on and so forth that without all of these practices of stealing what's not ours, capitalism wouldn't be where it is today. 
This week I read about how the nearly free labor of prisoners was being employed to bury the bodies of COVID victims in El Paso, Texas. Yes, we're still doing that. Thanksgiving, sadly, is a holiday in which, if we remember our history accurately, we're forced to grapple with the way white people ravaged the native peoples of this land. As people prepare to travel for the holidays and especially to visit aging loved ones, awareness that our ravaging ways continue today is not lost on some. As one Twitter user put it, bringing a deadly disease to people with little to no immunity is a very authentic Thanksgiving reenactment. Ezekiel says that in restoring God's flock and bringing them back together, God will feed the fat and the strong members of the flock a meal of justice, while those who have been deprived are served a feast. Well, ouch, that's a tough pill to swallow. Justice doesn't sound like a very good meal. It sounds a little dry and chewy and unsavory. What would it look like if we served up courses of justice this Thanksgiving to all those who have fattened themselves up by ravaging others? And I wonder, what meal would each of us be served? This month, we've been talking about good stewardship which is really just a fancy way to say we've been talking about how to use our resources, how to use things like our time and our talent and our finances. This season offers us an invitation. It's an invitation not just to enter deep gratitude and thanksgiving for what we have, that's part of it, but also to take care that our resources are invested in building the beloved community, that they are not being hoarded or participating in ravaging God's people. So if you haven't yet, pause this week and think and pray deeply about how your resources are being used. Maybe it's time for a shift. Part of the reason that I give to Good Sam is because time and again, I have seen how this community doesn't hoard its resources just to care for itself and its own, but it pours out extravagantly on our wider community and on the world. Some people, when they have too much for their cup, they just go and they get a bigger cup, but others let it overflow. I am very proud to be building the beloved community alongside you. Thanks be to God that we haven't been left in 2020 on our own, but God is leading the search party, <laughs> leading the rescue mission, and God will help us heal the wounds from the ways we have ravaged our own flock. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's take a moment of silence to digest this story. Well, let's come back together, and I want to take a moment to wonder with each other my question for us today is, I wonder what part of the image of God as our shepherd, what part of that image is most comforting to you and why? What part of the image of God as our shepherd is most comforting to you and why? And if you'd like to share with us, you can unmute yourself and then just remember to mute again when you're done. It's Noel. Um, I remember when we were in Israel, and uh, touring the shepherd's fields and the um, caves where the shepherds would bring the flock in at night. Um, and the, the wide door of the cave had been partially closed by a low stone wall until there was just an opening for one sheep to go through. And um, our guide told us that the shepherd would stand in that opening with his legs wide and every sheep would enter 
through his legs and he would run his hands through their coat to see if there were any injury, any briars, any um, that anything had happened to them to injure them that day. And that image of Jesus as the door of the sheep um, and the intimacy mm -hmm. of uh, knowing each one, each individual sheep and, and looking for its woundedness to care for it um, in a very specific way was very powerful. And then when all the sheep are in, the, the, like your friend from Sudan, the shepherd lies across that entrance. Mm -hmm. And again, becomes the protective door of the sheep. Thank you so much, Noel, for sharing that. For others, what? Where, if, excuse oh. me. Where where was that text from? Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Thank you. For others, what is so comforting about this image of God as shepherd? Is there anything that really speaks to you today? Uh, this is Martha. Um, I'm not alone because I am one sheep, but there's the whole flock of us there together. And that's very comforting. Yeah, we've ma managed to find each other, right? Or at least hear each other and see each other, <laughs> even from a distance. Yeah, thank you, Martha. Anyone else? I, um, I was envisioning that Often you see Jesus with a sheep around his neck. Um, and it's always in a loving, very loving gesture. And we know that shepherds protect, protect these animals, um, not because it's their job, but also because they care for those animals. They're many times might not be their own, they might be hired, but still, they feel a re responsibility. And it's nice to know that Jesus can be both a gentle and loving, but if something comes against us, the wolves in life, that he's strong and he'll step in and save us. Hmm. Thank you, Robin. Yeah. Are there others who'd like to share? Uh, this is Roy. I keep thinking of the song, um, Jesus Like a Shepherd Lead Us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think of him uh, always leading. Um, his way is not always easy. And uh, it's nice to know that uh, he precedes, <laughs> he goes before you. And and makes the way open for you, no matter how difficult it might be. And he's always there, so he's always ahead of you. So <laughs> it's comforting. Thank you, Roy. Anyone else? I think yeah, it's a, that image of Jesus as the shepherd. For the most part, doesn't speak strongly to me. I, Jesus as the shepherd who judges actually is more these days, the one who points to those who are fat, the exploiters, um, probably has more meaning to me than the comforting Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, I, and a Jesus who is a model for us to act on behalf of, of those who are more powerless is actually more strong for me right now. Thank you, Jean. Well, and you know, that's, there's comfort in, in knowing that there's, that justice is a part of the shepherd's work as well, isn't there? Thank you. Uh, I'd like to encourage you to continue to send in uh, your gifts, your investments in our beloved community and in our ministry together. 
continue to give out of what God has given to you. You can do that by either mailing in a check or bringing it to the food pantry during food pantry hours, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, nine to noon, or by visiting www.discovergoodsam.org slash give. We are right now in our stewardship season. And if we were meeting in person this Sunday, this would be our pledge Sunday. It'd be when we would bring in our pledge cards and we would commit to investing our time, our talents, and our money in our mission together at Good Sam of, of building the beloved community. And we would celebrate together all those gifts and our ministry together. But we are not together in person today. And, and so we ask that you put those commitments in the mail um, by the end of November or um, by early December. This week, most of you who live local at least uh, had one of the church leaders drive by your home and drop off a gift. And a number of materials were there inside that package to help you discern your pledge to Good Sam this year. We wanted you to have those gifts, not because you're, we, we wanted to try to uh, manipulate you into giving to Good Sam or even because we hope it will convince you to give. We wanted you to have them because we love you and we value you. And we thought something tangible to remind you of that might help that love feel real. There are no strings attached to that gift. I know this is a strange time of learning to do the church in some very different ways. And sometimes it's easy when we are physically distanced to have a hard time feeling like we're part of the community and deeply loved and valued. But each of you is so integral to our church and to our flock. You are loved, you are valued, you are wanted by us and you are wanted by God. Know that you are never alone. And those of you who live further away, uh, you will receive those stewardship materials uh, via the mail, and we will have those gifts waiting here uh, for you whenever you are able to return to the area. We ask you to prayerfully consider your investment in Good Sam's work uh, this year. And we hope that it comes as an overflowing of God's love and God's provision to you. This month, we have been listening to stories each week from members of our community We've been listening to stories about times in their life when their cup was empty and how God, through this church or something else, filled them to overflowing. Our final story this week is from Eric Johnson. Thank you, Pastor Jen. I appreciate this. And good morning, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. And to build on Pastor Jen, um, I received my stewardship um, package this week and it was such a nice surprise and delight I was I'm working from home and so to hear the door knock at the door I wasn't expecting I was like okay who's that and lo and behold I opened the door and there was a little the package at the, the foot of the doorstep and probably about 15 or 20 feet away in the distance was Dr. Burrell holding up a sign that good Sam loves you and it just totally made my day so it was just a nice surprise and delight and just reminded me, well, not reminded, but just confirmed how much I always love our Good Sam family. So thank you, Dr. Burrell, and everybody that putting that together. So for stewardship today, um, sharing a little story with, for myself. Um, in general, I, in life, I try to maintain a positive attitude. I have always viewed my life as a half full kind of guy. Because of this, many friends and families uh, would depend on me as being the go-to guy um, because I'm a good listener and a supportive person in their life to help with their problems. Well, a couple of years ago, after about 15 years, as many of you know, my marriage was on the rocks. I was putting on a brave front and keeping up my relationship issues pretty quiet. Because of this, instead of feeling half full and overflowing, my cup had felt very empty. Since joining Good Sam uh, eight years ago now, I've always felt the warmth and genuine love from members and friends of Good Sam. But it was, uh, it was on a Good Sam church-wide retreat about a year and a half ago that I truly felt surrounded by the power of love and support of God and my Good Sam family. At the retreat, I was able to reflect in peacefulness 
and nature and could see and feel God's light peeking through the tall shaded trees. I shared my story of marital issues and stress with other Good Sam treat, retreat uh, attendees and they listened, gave advice and love and became the half full cup of support that I needed. Since then, the last year and a half, I have evolved and healed through this major life transition by, help, by helping Good Sam's vision of building the beloved community through financial support or time like volunteering to collect food for the food pantry, giving out school supplies to our local surrounding area, or reconnecting with our Good Sam family with fa laughter and smiles via our pop-up events during the past year. These are just a few of the many reasons that brought my cup back to overflowing with love are due to the kindness, love and support of my Good Sam family and in turn brought my cup to overflow once again. I invite you to prayfully consider your pledge and how you can let love overflow from you this year. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. And as we consider uh, Eric's invitation to us, we will listen um, again to uh, the song Known, um, just a beautiful song that reminds us how loved we are. Will you pray with me? God, we pray that the gifts that come in this week would help us to feed the hungry, Help us to show mercy and to do justice. Help us to build your beloved community. Help us to heal wounds and find those who are lost or feeling alone or isolated. I thank you and, and celebrate uh, the way each of us has discerned or will discern what our commitment to this community will be this year. We give thanks for the love that we experience here, for your powerful presence that we experience when we are together. It's in your name we pray all of this. Amen. Well, we have a couple of announcements. Uh, the first is that our food pantry could use soups, saltine crackers, and canned vegetables this week. Um, they're open uh, Monday and Tuesday this week, 9 to noon, uh, closed on Thursday. Uh, we have our beloved community groups uh, still happening. And if that's something that would feed your soul, um, know that those are happening. Um, my group is not happening on Thursday evening because that is Thanksgiving. Jeremy, are you meeting this week? Uh, yes, we are. Okay. Jeremy's group will be meeting on Friday morning. Um, if any of you are not a part of those and, and you'd like to, just email uh, Jeremy or myself or um, you can go to the church website and under the virtual church uh, tab, you'll find a place to sign up for them. Uh, we have our uh, monthly uh, book club or book talk. You do not need to have read any particular book for this. Uh, this is a group of folks who get together and, and just really enjoy reading and talk about what they've been reading recently. Um, that's happening at 10 a.m. on Wednesday this week. And the Zoom ID is the same as for worship, 727-544-8558. Uh, Martha Taylor is the host of that group. If you are going to be alone on Thanksgiving, we want you to know that there is an hour that day from 4 to 5 p.m. when you can hop on Zoom with us. And, and those of us who, who are alone, or even if we're not and just wanting to be with other um, Good Sam folks, we will be together um, during that time and um, we'll just laugh. And even if you want to bring your food and eat with us, uh, we'd love to be together with you. And I'm going to turn things over to Eric for this announcement. Hello again, everyone. Well, I'm excited to remind everyone or announce that a week from tonight, we are having our very first th Thanksgiving uh, sunset concert. So it's gonna be held at the War Veterans Memorial Park in St. Petersburg, uh, off of Bay Pines Boulevard next to the VA hospital. And it will be at 3.30 and we're gonna be having it until about sunset. And my friend Rose, who is a wonderful cellist, 
she will be performing some beautiful music of a variety of music of all types of genres, some spirituals to American songbook to classical items. She'll be see, um, seated in a shelter area and we will be seated socially distanced all around on a wonderful lawn that's right along the water to have beautiful views of the intercoastal waterway and, and hopefully have a nice breeze as we've been having some wonderful weather recently. Um, now, while we're there, we'll be uh, closely monitoring social distancing, um, wearing of masks. So please, if you would like to come, please be sure to wear a mask. Uh, we will have some hand sanitizer. If you have some like portable, sure, but we will have those type of stations. Um, this is our first uh, event. So depending on in person, this is a big deal. So depending on how this all goes, will depend on how um, we'll continue about having in-person meetings in the future. Uh, to bring snacks for, for those in your household, if um, please don't share with others, um, just trying to keep it safe. Um, if you can bring a folding chair or like a, a camping chair or some type of portable chair, that would be great. We will have a couple just in case, but, um, and please, we will have designated seating areas. So we're gonna socially distance mark areas on the lawn and we'll have somebody from our team, the fellowship and outreach team to kind of direct you where to kind of park yourselves and your group. And please bring a big marker for making signs. We're gonna be doing some fun activities that we'll be making some signs at the event and be able to um, kind of maybe do some fun um, holding up some signs to communicate with each other from across. Um, we also will be accepting donations for those that are able to, to help um, fund our musician, um, Rose. And um, let's see, um, I think that's, if we feel it's not safe to meet because of COVID, or if we determine the weather is gonna be bad, we'll cancel or postpone the event. So please check your email or the church website the day before the event to see if it has been canceled for any reason. All right, well, I hope to everybody will be able to join us for, I think, which, which should be a really wonderful, peaceful um, event. And it'll be great to see all of your smiling faces. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. Um, you can reach me by my email um, or my phone number. Thank you, Eric. And just a reminder, if you know anyone in the church who, um, does not receive email or is not on Zoom with us um, and may not know about that event, please reach out to them and, and encourage them to, to join us for that. Our last announcement is that um, we are doing Head Start gifts again this year. Um, so we are um, collecting gifts for the Head Start students. Uh, many of you know that, that the students who come to our Head Start Center, all of their families live below the, the poverty line and Christmas can be uh, difficult to provide for their kids. Um, so we've had a bunch of backpacks that were donated to us and we are filling those with um, a few toys and uh, a gift card um, to help the, the parents be able to buy their child a, a gift. Um, we know that it's much harder this year for you to go out and uh, actually shop in person and with COVID cases rising, you may not feel comfortable doing that. So this year we're just asking for a, a monetary uh, donation and you can put in the, the memo line of the check or when you make a donation online, uh, there's a place to, to put in a description there too. Um, just put in Head Start gifts and we'll know that that's what it's for. And now friends, go out from this place in peace. Go out knowing that you walk each and every day with God our shepherd Know that you go out with the God who stands between us and all the dangers threatening us. Know that you go out with the God who seeks us out when we are lost and alone. Know that you go out with the God who pursues justice. Go out in peace, my friends. Let's sing our closing song, Carry the Light. And now will you unmute yourself and shout out with me together. We're going to say shalom, salam, peace. Are you ready? Here we go. Shalom. Shalom. Salam. 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 Peace. peace.
Go in peace, my friends, and uh, stick around for um, some fellowship time if you'd like to. <laughs>